Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's a sad story, isn't it? The gospel lesson that we heard today, remember what it was? The rich man and, and poor Lazarus? It's an account that tells us about Lazarus who had absolutely nothing from an earthly point of view. He was poor and homeless and hungry, really didn't have anything, and no one seemed to really care about him. The, the highlight of Lazarus's day was when the dogs would come and, and lick his sores. So we hear about Lazarus and his condition. Our hearts go out to him because he knew suffering in a very real way. Well, today in our sermon lesson, Jesus is talking to a group of Christians who also knew a, a thing about suffering. Uh, he's writing to a group of Christians living in a town called Smyrna. This is part of Revelation where Jesus has the Apostle John write seven different letters to seven different churches. And, and our lesson is this letter to these Smyrna Christians. Smyrna was a, a city in Turkey. Today it's called Izmir. It's got about three million people living in it. But we learn quite a bit from the words of Jesus that he wrote 2,000 years ago to these Christians. In these verses, he talks about how these Christians in Smyrna were living in poverty. They were poor, maybe not as bad as Lazarus, but pretty bad. He also mentions how they were being persecuted for their faith. There was a, a group of, of Jewish people who rejected Jesus as the Messiah, and they were actively persecuting Christians and Christianity. And even mentions how some of them pretty soon would be thrown into prison. When we think about the Smyrna Christians, our hearts go out to them too because they knew suffering in a very real way. What sort of problems are you going through right now? Or what sort of problems have you gone through in your life? Maybe it's advancing age and the health problems that come with it. Maybe it's a chronic illness that you or someone you love has. Maybe it's problems at home or problems at work, conflict with someone else, conflict with a, a fellow Christian. Maybe it's battling depression or feeling lost and alone at times, feeling like everything is meaningless in your life. Or maybe it's losing someone you love and you just can't seem to get over it. Or maybe it's battling or struggling against a certain sin or addiction. Maybe it's struggling with alcohol or pornography or greed or gossip or pride or, or something else. In our struggles and in our problems in this life, that's when the devil comes and he tries to land a few blows on us. And he comes and he whispers into our ears, does your God really know what it's like? Does your God really care about you? If your God really loved you, why is he letting this happen in your life? If your God really cares about you, why doesn't he just end your problems right now? And all too often we probably have to admit that we've listened to those lies and we've doubted the Lord. We've doubted the Lord's goodness, we've doubted the Lord's plans, we've doubted the Lord's wisdom. And I'm sure those were the same lies that the devil whispered in the ears of Lazarus, that he also whispered in the ears of those Smyrna Christians too. Where is your God in all of this? Does he really know what you're going through and does he really care? And that's when we take a look at our lesson for today and we see a very simple phrase that Jesus speaks and it completely shatters those lies and it shatters our doubts. And the phrase is this, I know. Jesus says, I know. Listen again to the words of our lesson from Revelation chapter 2. It says, these are the words of him who is the first and the last who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know the slander of those who say they're Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. 
Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death. Did you hear Jesus' words? He says, I know your afflictions and your poverty. And when Jesus says, I know your problems, it's more than just this general knowledge of being aware of the problems that we're going through. Remember who's talking here. This is Jesus, the eternal Son of God. And our lesson says, this is the one who died and came back to life. This is the one who entered our world of sorrow and sadness, even though he didn't need to. This is the one who traded his throne in heaven for a lowly manger. This is the one who traded divine power and majesty and glory for suffering and humility and a cross. And he did it to share in your griefs and your pains and your struggles. He did it to be your savior. And so Jesus does know. Jesus knows what it's like to be hungry. He knows what it's like to be tired. He knows what it's like to be worn out and feeling all alone. He knows what it's like to be rejected. He knows what it's like to struggle with sin even though he was perfect. He knows what it's like to lose a close friend, and he knows what it's like to cry at a funeral. Jesus does know. Jesus came into this world knowing full well what he was going to suffer, and he also knew why he would suffer. Jesus suffered all of those things. He endured all of those things so that he could say to you, so that he could say to Lazarus and those Smyrna Christians, despite your problems, despite your suffering, despite your sins, you know what? You are rich. Jesus says, I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich because Christ has made you rich. 2 Corinthians says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Jesus knew suffering and hardship in a real, tangible sort of way, and he also knew there was a purpose in his suffering. And that was to snatch you out of the arms of Satan, to bring you into God's kingdom, to give you the crown of life. And just as Jesus knew there was purpose in his suffering, he knows something else. He knows there's purpose in your suffering. Listen to him again in our lesson. He says, Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Jesus knows there's a purpose in our suffering. We see in these verses that God isn't the one who, who brings evil in our lives. He's not the cause of evil, but he uses evil. He uses the problems and the struggles that we face. And here we see how he uses them as a test. When I was in 10th grade, I was in a phi ed class, and every other day we had to either run a mile and a half or do a 15-minute run to see how far we could get. Now, for people who were in cross-country or track, doing something like that, I'm sure, was pretty simple and easy. But when I was in 10th grade, even though I played all sorts of different sports, I don't think I had run over a mile in my entire life. And so when it came to that class, I absolutely dreaded it, and I hated it for the first few weeks. A mile and a half, this is crazy. But well, what ended up happening? Over time, I got stronger. My endurance built up so that my time in the mile and a half got a whole lot better. And the 15-minute run, I could run longer. And pretty soon, by the end of the semester, I was running two to three miles on my own just for fun. Now, today, I probably can't do that anymore. But you get the point. Over time... You grow endurance and strength when you exercise, and even though it's really difficult and challenging. Well, the devil uses problems and challenges in our lives 
all in an attempt to try to lead us away from Christ. All in an attempt to get us to doubt God's love and his promises to us. But the Lord uses those same problems and those same struggles in exactly the opposite way. He uses our problems and our hardships to strengthen us. Now, how does he do that? Well, when we go through problems and struggles in this life, it makes us aware of something. It teaches us something. It teaches us how weak we are on our own. It teaches us how much we need Jesus in our lives, how much we need his word, how much we need to hear his promises. And it teaches us that what we have in Christ is a treasure that doesn't even compare to the greatest blessings here on earth. And so as we face struggles, even though they're hard and difficult and challenging, they strengthen us and they build up an endurance so that we can deal with them faithfully. And so Jesus knows. He knows that the problems that you're going through right now, even though we might not always understand why, he knows and he's telling you that there is a purpose to them. There's one more thing that Jesus knows today. When it comes to our struggles, he knows that one day they will end. In our lesson for today, he's talking to those Smyrna Christians, and he talks about how some of them were even going to be thrown into jail because of their faith in Jesus. But then he reminds all of them, don't worry because your persecution and your suffering, it's only going to last for 10 days. And when we first read it, maybe we wonder a little bit, well, what does Jesus mean exactly when he says 10 days? Is he talking about a, a literal amount of time that they're going to suffer for 10 days and, and that's it? That could be the case, but more likely, so often in Revelation when it uses numbers, it uses them symbolically. And so the number 10 is a complete number. It suggests a complete amount of time, and the word days then would suggest that their suffering isn't going to be super long. It isn't going to last forever. That one day it will end. It's actually something similar to what the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians. He says, Our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Do your problems seem light and momentary? Do your problems seem temporary? Do your problems seem short? Maybe sometimes they do, but probably not always. A chronic illness that we have or someone we love has, problems at home or at work that just don't seem to ever get resolved, losing someone we love and care about, a lifelong battle or an addiction that we're going through, and everyone keeps on saying, you know, things are going to get better. And maybe they do some days, but then there are days where it just seems like things aren't getting better. Our problems don't always seem so light and momentary in the moment. But then again, remember who's talking here. This is Jesus. He's called the first and the last. He's the eternal Son of God. And he knows very well that our problems right in the moment they might not seem light and momentary and short. But he invites us to remember to compare our problems to eternity, to have an eternal perspective on them. See, the problems that we go through are really difficult and challenging, and Jesus might not save you from those problems immediately today or tomorrow or in the next month. He certainly didn't do that for Lazarus while he was here on earth. And he didn't do it for the Smyrna Christians either. But that's when we remember that Jesus has saved us from something. Something much, much worse than the problems that we go through on a daily, weekly basis. He saved us from hell. The last verse of our lesson says, He who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death. It's talking about eternal death in hell. And so this morning, I invite you to think back to that story of rich man and poor Lazarus and ask yourself this question, what's the saddest part in that account? The saddest part isn't Lazarus. 
It isn't that Lazarus had all of these earthly struggles. It wasn't that he was dirt poor and had nothing from an earthly point of view. The saddest part in that account is the rich man. The rich man who rejected Christ, who rejected God's word, and who ended up in hell. What's the saddest part about these Smyrna Christians? It wasn't that they were living in poverty. It wasn't that they were being persecuted for their faith. And it wasn't even that, that some of them were going to be thrown into prison. The saddest part comes from those enemies. Those enemies who had rejected Christ and who had rejected his word because they ended up in hell too because of their unbelief. Hell isn't something we like to talk about very often. Hell makes us feel uncomfortable, but we need to. We need to talk about it and we need to think about it because we remember that there is only one solution to that problem, and that, problem is Jesus, that solution is Jesus. The solution isn't our good works and all of the good things that we might do in our lives. The solution isn't found in being nice people and being friendly to one another. The solution isn't trying to just try our hardest and, well, God's going to take it easy on us. The solution is found in Jesus. Through his perfect life, through his death on the cross, through his resurrection from the dead, because he has saved us from the worst thing ever. He saved us from hell. And through faith in Jesus, we are forgiven children of God. Through faith in Jesus, we have been brought into God's kingdom. And through faith in Jesus, he has won for us and he will give to us the crown of life in heaven. And knowing that, doesn't it lead us to think about these things a little bit differently? Doesn't it lead us to be faithful when we face problems in our lives because we remember all of the things that Jesus suffered for us? Doesn't it lead us to think about our problems and remember that, that God actually does have a purpose in the suffering that we go through? That's his promise to you. And doesn't it lead us to keep our eyes focused on heaven and the eternal glory that awaits us there because Jesus has not only won for us the crown of life, but one day he will give it to you. And it does one more thing, too. Doesn't it lead us to invite and share and talk to and speak with those who don't know Jesus yet? Because it's through Jesus and only through Jesus that we are forgiven and saved and made eternally rich. Amen.